Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends, to whichever part of the world you are in right now. Uh, it's afternoon here in Hungary, a beautiful afternoon. It rained the entire night, and uh, today I'm just starting to prepare my lunch. Uh, the menu for the day is um, mutter paneer with uh, rice. So I would like to share with you my recipe for how I make mutter paneer. Uh, let me start introducing you to the ingredients here. Alright, so here are the ingredients. We have some finely chopped onions, some paneer, some tomatoes, ginger and garlic finely chopped up again along with some green chilies and coriander. We have some green peas. This is the frozen variety. I have blanched them a little bit. And here is where all the magic happens. We have a little bit of cumin powder. We have um, uh, haldi powder, turmeric powder, we have green uh, red chili powder, we have coriander powder. Uh, my mom always says to use a little bit extra coriander powder to get that nice thick gravy. We have a mix of a little bit of garam masala and um, the sabji masala and of course salt to taste. In the end I always prefer some kasuri methi. Um, which enhances the aroma of the dish immensely. I am also going to use a little bit of tayfol as they call it here, uh, but it's basically cream uh, at the end of the dish to give it a Mughlai touch. Okay, so as we start, I am switching on the heat. I am going to use a little more than medium heat. Um, we start with adding uh, roughly around two tablespoons of oil. Oh, that was a little bit extra, but that's okay. And we let it heat up. Okay, so the oil is all heated up. I'm going to throw in the ginger garlic, the onion, and everything into the hot oil. And I'm going to uh, uh, make start the process of cooking. Please don't mind me using my hands. I'm just cooking for myself today, so it's okay. And this is my first, or I mean, actually my second video, and uh, I'm still not set up with my gear to do my blogs. But here I am, trying out to the best of my capabilities. So there goes the onion, the ginger and the garlic, give it a nice stir with my spatula. I'm gonna cook this till the onions turn slightly translucent and brown or maybe slightly brownish but I don't want to overcook this. I'll get back to you when I'm ready to put the tomatoes. You know, one of the secrets that I've learned to have a nice colored caramelized onion is to put a pinch of sugar or maybe you can even use jaggery. This is not going to make your curry sweet, but it is going, just going to bring out the color of the onions well. So as you can see, it's already started to become a little transparent, maybe even bordering on the brown. Um, so just a few more seconds and then I'm gonna add in the tomatoes. Alright, so in goes the tomato. In goes the tomato here. I really like the tomatoes here because they just cook so quickly. And you know this is pretty much still here. This is a common step that is followed across all the all the Indian dishes. You make the masala and usually the moment you finish adding the tomatoes, I prefer adding in the salt. At least a little bit of it, not the whole bit. A little bit of it. Just to give that extra kick to the tomatoes to get sweated out completely and cooked. 
I'm going to be looking for the masala here to totally lose its moisture and start showing me some oil on the sides which is when I go to the next step so as you can see my tomato is almost cooked up this is usually the time and it's even started to stick a little bit but I've just reduced the heat by a bit just to make sure that it doesn't burn but I, as I can still see some of the moisture which is still left and now I'm going to slowly put in all the ingredients so here put in all the ingredients giving it a nice stir getting sticking so I'm just gonna add a little bit of water just to make sure that I get a nice gravy going here the masalas just remember that whenever you add the masalas make sure that you turn down the heat we don't want the masalas to burn but at the same time we want the masalas to be added a little earlier in the process so that it cooks up and it infuses inside the overall you know dish the masalas are all infused the curry is really taking a nice shape i'm already starting to get the aroma of a nice indian curry base just a few more stirs in a few maybe a couple of more minutes before I add in the mutter and that's when I want them to boil and make it a little bit more liquidy as you can see my masala is properly cooked up I can see the oils on the side I reduce the heat a bit and I add in the green peas you know these green peas are really really good for health a very good source of plant protein really really important to have it at least once or twice a week if not more it's really good nowadays it's very easy as well because you get these frozen packets obviously which you guys probably already know and i've just added in my green peas and i'm now going to add in my chunks of paneer to complete the dish here oops you know it's always difficult to cook and shoot a video all by yourself especially when you don't have the proper gear but the important thing is that I'm able to share the recipe with you guys hopefully you'll be able to make this at home for all the men at home who do not ever go to the kitchen and you know sit on the table and you know they get all the nice dishes served for them try cooking for a while for a change it's pretty interesting it's not that tough you know the formula remains the same everything remains the same for quite a bit as you can see it didn't take me more than 15 minutes once I had the ingredients sorted out to do the actual cooking I'm just going to let it cook uh, maybe for a minute longer uh, we don't really want to cook the paneer dry because it can it tends to make the paneer drier and harder so it's just to kind of infuse the masalas everywhere and then I'm going to add in the water it's always better if you add in warm water but I did not prepare for it so I'm just adding in some of the water now please be aware the water is to make this into a gravy but if you want to have it with a chapati then you can make it less thick and or you can make it like a less liquidy and use it like a sukha sabji as well okay so I'm gonna let it just boil for a few minutes and then get back to you I added in a little bit of water more than I wanted actually for the gravy so I'm going to really make it boil I've already cracked up the heat 
the only other two three ingredients that are left to be put into this are uh, the coriander leaves the tayfol or the cream and the kasuri methi these things you generally put it towards the end and you do not uh, use it and another thing i do not uh, fry my paneer uh, some people prefer to do that i do not i like my paneer fresh and soft so uh, but at the same time uh, feel free to to use the other version of paneer if you don't like the raw taste of paneer uh, it's very easy take a tablespoon of ghee in a small pan uh, once it is heated just put in the paneer give it a stir just like a stir fry just till just about till the sides are brown do not over fry do not over toast the paneer it, paneer it just doesn't taste well in the in the in the overall curry uh, but if you do not mind the raw taste of the paneer like uh, like me, you can go ahead with uh, without uh, really frying the paneer. So as you can see, it's boiling over now. This is the time for me to put in the kasuri methi, you know, and the coriander leaves, and just give it a nice mix. As you can see can't wait to eat I have to just cook my rice after this you can even eat it with chapatis however you prefer it is a very 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 easy wholesome meal in itself you don't really need to add anything it is full of proteins uh, both casein protein and the and the fast digesting protein in, in the piece uh, uh, we do not we did not use a lot of oil you can actually skip the cream that i'm going to put into this and that's just probably the last thing i'm going to add in here as well and give it another rail and it just gives out that you know the feeling of a gravy and uh, a, a good gravy that comes you know that you usually see in the northern part of india um, this is really one of those curries which i absolutely love whether it is with a chapati or a paratha or even plain rice uh, today i might be cooking a little bit of jira basmati rice um, i will put that recipe for that in a different video for you guys to watch later on so here it's boiling away to glory so this is on full boil now uh, the ingredients are all getting fused together uh, in just about 30 seconds I'm gonna just switch off the heat and let it just rest for some time uh, I just want the gravy to thicken a little bit more than this so that it you know it just doesn't flow like water but it becomes a little bit of little thickness you can even add uh, maybe cornstarch or something to make the gravy thicker but I like to just boil it and make it thicker the natural way uh, once this is done basically you have to just do all you have to do is dish it out uh, into a nice bowl um, have nice steaming hot rice and uh, cut some salad and enjoy your meal so this is Arun signing off see you next time when i come up with something new bye bye